Well, welcome. Uh, my name is Enrique Serrano. I'm a part of the team building open API solutions at BBVA. Today, I want to talk about our experience in open banking through APIs. And I will also present you some of the use cases we have developed through these years. First, where do we come from? Well, the BBVA is a global financial institution services group that was founded in 1857. The group has a solid leadership position in Spain, is the largest financial institution in Mexico, and has leading franchises in South America, the United States, and Turkey. Some years ago, before our digital transformation, we were dealing with systems like every other company on the sector that we're dealing with a system to manage all the bank operations and businesses. Those systems, those backends, that will originally serve internal purposes only, were built in different time periods, using different technologies, and following different standards. So when the digital evolution arrived, and we assumed those backends will need to serve new applications, new origins, we faced that problem. As Integration was difficult and very different from backend to backend. And not just that, because you also needed to implement a customized security module for each of those consumers. But at the same time, the number of consumers never stopped growing. We had internal applications, we have different websites for our customers, mobile apps, and even wearables are coming in now as new channels. So we needed a solution to guarantee efficiency and security. How did we solve it? Well, the bank made a huge effort in building a new layer between that growing number of channels and all those backend services. A layer to centralize integration with them and offer a set of services that will allow a set of services following industry standards to ensure a common interface for everyone. Uh, this way, thus, was born our internal catalog, a catalog that, for the record, nowadays has more than 5,000 services and more than 200 channels in Spain alone. But all those channels are internal to the, to the bank. So in this environment of growing openness, how can I offer all those tools to a third party? Well, some years ago, when we started with our API market, we had a lot of internal APIs that offered very complete solutions. But they had a problem for, uh, for the external developer. They were too complex. And logically, as they needed to serve dozens of channels with different needs at once. And not only that, because as, a, as an internal channel of the BBVA, I have a complete understanding of the internal jargon used in those services. I'm sure you've heard of Lego. Well, just in case there's, some, there's someone absent-minded, Lego is a plastic block building game, which funny thing is that those blocks are interchangeable and offer you the possibility to build almost everything you can imagine. This way, there are some blocks that are interchangeable and allow you to build both a Millennium Falcon and a TIE Fighter. But others, like the antenna of that Millennium Falcon, is only uh, for that design and cannot be, and, and you can reuse it, it's true, but you're, what you're gonna end up is with something with the antenna of the Millennium Falcon at the top. And this is some kind of analogy for our internal our open APIs from the point of view of the developers. The first one will be like that internal block that serves everything, but that on its own doesn't make sense or add value in any way. And the other, one, the other ones, the open APIs, will be like that antenna that is recognized with the naked eye as the antenna of the bloody Millennium Falcon. So, uh, sorry, sorry, OK. Sorry, well, with our, with our open APIs, what we're seeking is to offer a, a simple and easy to integrate interface for our developers. 
because the oh, all right. <laughs> sorry the vision for our internal APIs is functionality. They need to serve dozens of channels at once, as I just said, and this way they need to cover all the purposes those channels may need. On the other way, our vision for our open APIs is to be product-oriented. That is, define what you want to sell in your market and build an API that does that and nothing more. And this is one of the reasons we needed a new layer for our APIs to allow orchestration of those internal resources. Because you need to abstract the, de the, internal, the developer from the complexity of your system. They want and need to ignore completely what is happening under those open APIs. OK, where are we right now with regard to open banking? BBB offers several API products in different countries. Countries. Each country is developing a different strategy that responds to its local capability and local markets. Thus, in Spain, for example, we have data-driven APIs as well as a set of three-legged APIs that allows us, our customers, to securely share their data within the bank with third parties. In Me Mexico's approach is almost similar, but more based on two-legged APIs to allow everyone, whether or not they are VBA customer, to benefit from them. On the US, on the other hand, in the US, through our BBBA open platform and its banking as a service platform based on two-legged APIs, we offer our third parties the possibility to offer their, cli their clients a true wide level banking services experience. I'm going to digress here uh, a second to explain all this jargon about two- and three-legged APIs, just in case to ensure that everyone understands the concept, as it will be repeated through this presentation. In a two-legged, the number before the legal term refers to the number of actors authenticated in the process. This way, for a two-legged APIs, there are just two actors, which is the client, who is the developer willing to access the, that API, and the resource owner, who is the owner of the API. In this case, the authentication is quite simple. But in a three -legged, for a three-legged API, though, you have a new actor that comes into place. And he, he's the user. He's the owner of the data or the main actor that is going to be involved in the operation that will take place. In these three-legged APIs, it is the user, the end user, who is going to grant access to that client to access those APIs on his behalf. Now, back to the presentation. Why open banking? Well, our APIs simplify integration for a third party, allowing them a faster time to market. But the main reason is that it allows us to collaborate with our enterprises, from fintech to large corporations, in order to, be to build better digital solutions through collaboration. Sorry. Sorry. And you may think that by offering those open APIs, what you're doing is uh, opening your tools, the ones you use to build all your business cases. And you may be hesitant about sharing them. And that's right. But you need that global community of developers, entrepreneurs, and business partner partners in order to bring you new points of view and ideas for the usage of your APIs. And this brings us to the next point, because those open APIs will be your storefront. They will show the world your business and technical capabilities, as well as your level of openness. Bear in mind that those open APIs are going to be your final product, and consequently should be taken care of as one of the front for your organization. You do have UX profiles for your website, right? Well, you should have something similar for your open APIs. And not just UX, there is a lot of different departments of your organization to get involved in the publication of those APIs. Now, enough about the theory, let's go with some use cases. Perhaps you've heard about the collaboration between Uber and BBVA in Mexico through APIs. What's the purpose? Well, Uber want to offer their drivers in Mexico 
the possibility of opening a digital account from the very uh, app for drivers they had. And, not, and apart from that, they also want to uh, have in that application all the information regarding the product from the client. And how it is done? Well, through APIs, obviously. But what we offer Uber is uh, an API to enroll that driver as a BBVA customer, as well as an API to create that digital account, which, by the way, is linked to a de customized debit card that offers a special benefit for those drivers, like discounts in petrol stations. This way, these APIs are two-legged APIs, as the customer to be is not yet identifiable by the bank. But once it has become a customer, Uber consumes our three-legged APIs to retrieve the information from their, from their products, mainly balances and movements, through three-legged APIs. Now, before uh, going on to the next use case and as a brief introduction to it, in the bank we have a lot of asynchronous events triggered by the customer's activity, from money transfer, car purchases, cash withdrawal. And in our API market, in our BBVA API market, we have two APIs related to those events. How? Well, our notifications API for business and retail customers allow a third party to get subscribed to those notifications and receive them in real time. Obviously, previous uh, an authorization by the end user as they are three-legged APIs. Do you remember some slides ago we were talking about how open banking offered us the possibility of getting to new points of view and new ideas for the usage of our APIs? Well, the next use, the next use case that is using these notifications APIs is just that. One of our enterprise clients came to us and proposed the following. What if I subscribe to my own notifications? You see, as a three-legged API, you will, you will expect two of those legs to be the same entity. There are better ways of solving this problem. But as they were consuming their own data, it seemed legit, so we accepted. But before signing the deal, and as part of our due diligence process, any developer that want, wanting to go live needs to pass, we asked for the purpose. And the purpose was to speed up the purchase for their retail customers. I'm going to dig into details. This customer has had an e-commerce where they offer several payment solutions, the most common ones like a car purchase or PayPal, and others not so common in Spain like a money transfer, at least before PSV2. The problem here is that if the sender and the receiver of the operation doesn't belong to the same bank, the OK for the confirmation for the operation could take up to one day. And in addition to that, they told us they needed to manually seek for those confirmations in the, in the account uh, movements. So at the end, they confessed us they were having a maximum delay of two, three days. In this case, the notifications API is not perfect. The solution is not perfect, as it will not be able to address the problem of the operation jumping from bank to bank. But at least by receiving the event in real time, they can get the confirmation, which, by the way, but the, by the way, that confirmation could be for an operation that is just 500 euros. And it takes them up to two days, which is more than it takes Amazon to deliver the product to your house. So we were just cutting down that delay to one day, but at least it's half or even lower of what they had before. And this brings us to the conclusions and the lessons learned through these years. First, Open APIs are very trendy right now, and that's wonderful. But at the same time, that means they are no longer only a partnering solution. They are no longer only a way of connecting our systems. And now, what they are also is a marketing product. 
So be very careful about what you publish because it, it may affect your reputation. And because of that, don't let laziness, laziness affect your, your product. You see, refining an open API will take time. And the more time it takes, the more expensive it will be. But a poor design will translate into deal loss and complaints on Twitter. Also, the open APIs are business enablers. Trying to monetize an API per se is only worthy if your business is to sell those APIs. Otherwise, focus on enabling current and new businesses through APIs. And last but not least, open APIs are not for everything, nor for everyone. Before entering this amazing world, be concerned about how time-consuming and expensive can be to get all the systems to manage those APIs as well as the developers and the scopes and everything. Don't put the cart before the horse and start by refining your systems before trying to assume them. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Do we have questions from the audience? Enrique. Anyone? No? Yeah. Yes. Wait a second. I'm coming. Um, as I know, tomorrow, if, if uh, it's correct, uh, is the last day for all the banks to um, open the, the APIs for the PSD2 regulation, no? Mm -hmm. um, how has been that process in BBVA and uh, how are the main challenges you, you see uh, for, uh, forward to to achieve this, this regulation, it is an opportunity, it is like a pain, uh, how it has been in, 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 in the bank? Well, several questions at once. Well, uh, the BVVA is part of an agreement with almost all the banks in Spain to offer those PSD2 services by tomorrow, as you said, through an unique hub that is going to be Red Swiss. That offers the third party a unique interface, a unique interface for those services and an unique entry point. Now the other question was sorry? Ah the main challenges. There is it's not so difficult as those APIs that are required now by PSD2, we had almost all of them ready and in our API market by uh, like two years ago already. But there are not so challenges. There are some opportunities here with the PSD2, as it will be able to, um, uh, to teach the developers about how to interact with a bank, about how uh, thorough our, uh, our regulator is with the banking sector. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? We actually have some time. Okay, so thank you, Enrique. It was a great presentation.